Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the next video, and this one is just a highlights video of the One Hive Genesis Varhai Seleke War. And I do have to apologize, I haven't uploaded the last few days. Um, typically, I'd be uploading live attacks, some live with One Hive, and I would have had the stream earlier today. Um, I was at a football game towards the end of war, which uh, kind of negated my ability to stream. So, um, sorry about that. I was hoping to get out some more videos uh, beyond just these types of recap type videos, but wasn't able to get any of that done. I do have some pretty cool stuff planned though for this next coming week. I also have a channel update video I have to get out soon. Uh, so you guys will see some more videos coming out and I'll try to get some uh, live attacks recorded from the midweek search uh, coming up here in a bit. So that all being said, um, also have a defensive video, by the way, that I've been hoping to do, and um, one kind of special video as well. So got some cool stuff. Sorry about my kind of lack of uploads over the last few days, but let's get into this war because it was um, something that we don't, we have not had yet in One Hive Genesis. We've had a loss in CWL this season, but we haven't had really a moral loss like this one, where the clan just didn't perform. At a high level because our last loss um, we still put up 85 stars we were very close with the top clan uh, in the league but this one just didn't feel like a good war to us and um, we're going to take a look at some of their attacks and some of our attacks um, don't want to waste any good attacks even if they are on some of our bases so we'll get to that in just a minute just to kind of go through right here they um they cleared the tens they did a good job 10 v 11 i think 10 or 11 attacks to clear that. Um, they had like one dip fail, but they had three 10v10s. And their nines were also very good, giving them scouts on all of our 10s and even one of the 11s, I think. Uh, we just, our 10v11 was good. That I was happy about that. We were able to get these attacks done. Uh, four for nine, very, very solid there. Um, we left, that being said, left four Town Hall 10s. Um, now we had two dip fails, but I don't think that was the main thing because they happened towards the end. I think people were kind of a little bit, um, by then it was pretty much over and uh, people just weren't quite focusing as much as they might have been if it was a close war. Uh, I think the main thing was the 9v9 was very slow. We had to dip a few bases to give ourselves just a few scouts. So um, the 9v9s was kind of lethargic this war, and also the 10v10s did not get any 10v10s, um, which is kind of unusual. We've, we've had that happen one other week as well, but um, this week it definitely hurt us. And um, uh, as we get to this first attack here, which was a very nice one by uh, uh, Zach of Blades, I want to say that um, a lot of people say good war, bad war, you know, we had a bad war, they had a good war. I don't like saying that because I think what good war and bad war comes down to is the base design because every all the emphasis gets put on the attacking and how the attacks go, but when a clan has a bad war, I think it means the other clan showed up defensively with some good solid bases. So um, there is you know some variation people, you know, you have people out that week, they, they aren't able to participate, some of your best attackers, stuff like that can happen. But I think a lot of these like quote unquote bad wars that um, we see is really just the other clan having some good bases and putting up a very good defensive showing, which really isn't emphasized much uh, in these types of wars. So um, on that note, I think uh, Varhai Seleke had some good bases uh, for sure. And it really gave our nines and some tens uh, some problems. Although the Town Hall 11 bases we had much more success on. In terms of our bases, you know, we're still working on that. That's one of the things that we really want to get um, to a higher level uh, to the point where they're not able to clear the nines quite as easily because, you know, we have to start letting some clans have some of their worst wars against us. And that comes down to having some good bases. Although, you know, it's not like this is some kind of, uh, you know, uh -oh, we're in desperation mode. We've had a very good season. And I think this um, this week we'll put behind us and we'll just get right back to it uh, the following week before our bye week. So uh, I don't really think um, anything too much to worry about. We're just going to have to, you know, focus on, on learning from what happened this war. That was a really weird minion shot, by the way, as it chased that pup. The, the little piece of uh, the thing it shoots went really high in the air. That was kind of weird. Uh, but anyway, enough talk about the, the clan. 
This was such a nice attack. The last 11 we cleared. We hasted some loons. Uh, this is Zach of Blades into those, uh, I'm sorry, into the buildings there around this area. Then some minions just for percentage and for the CC lure. Um, once the CC was lured out, baby dragon kill um, on the hound and then drops the heroes. And instead of using a jump, the quakes, because the quakes, the jump has a weird way of not quite opening things up because the, the troop has to actually jump over the wall into the next compartment. Whereas with the quakes, they can stand on top of where the wall was, which is important for this town hall, which is just out of range of the queen if the wall was still up. But because the wall has been quaked over, uh, she just steps up to where the wall once was. And basically on top of the broken wall, she shoots down the town hall with a jump that's not quite as certain. A uh, few <clears throat> percentage troops. This one is going to be um, a very nice two star by Zach of Blades. Great stuff. Um, this type of base often gets hit with like a golem bowler from the uh, the long way to get buildings and to get to that town hall. But oftentimes the troops don't walk into the town hall properly. So it's kind of a, a southern, southern teaser, although it's teasing you on the bottom side, uh, which has all of these, um, these buildings down here. So uh, even if you see this type of base, don't rush to doing uh, a mass golem bowler on it. Really think about the pathing and if you can actually get troops into that town hall, especially with a CC Lava Hound that'll hold up your queen. So um, that base can be tricky even though it looks relatively simple. But a nice attack there dealing with it. Let's move on. I never like to waste good 10v10 attacks, which is why we're gonna take a look at two of theirs. They had three. Uh, one of them was basically just kind of by brute force. I think they hit the base like five or six times and it was, um, one of our lower level bases. So it didn't really feel right to show that because that base took uh, did such a good job for us. But um, this was probably their best 10v10 on a near max Town Hall 10. Uh, the, the wizard towers are not maxed out and it looks like uh, some of the cannons are not either. But for the most part, a maxed out base in Dao here and dragons not as common as some other types of compositions we see. Uh, so very good stuff. Uh, I was thinking when he didn't get that air defense with the queen, um, the, okay, now he missed an air defense, but what ends up happening is this kill squad, it was a brilliant push here. He gets all four air defenses just with the golem, the king, and the bowlers, then the jump and the rage, because the second bounce off of that elixir storage will, uh, will also take out the air defense, then the other two go down uh, just in the wake of all those troops, and that last one gets taken out eventually, as well as the queen too. So incredible value from this kill squad um, in terms of everything he got there. Then goes ahead and starts the dragons up top on the top right of the base, lets them just kind of work their way into these defenses here. A few loons, I believe, he's going to drop right there. Yeah, get those loons going. Uh, that's just to start taking out defenses while the dragons are tanking a little bit. Um, just kind of putting them among the dragons almost. Nice heal spell. Now, the heal spell, I, at first I thought it was kind of questionable, but it keeps up that one dragon and that one loon a little bit longer, which is important because they're kind of funneling the rest of the dragons uh, deeper into the base here. These two expos can be tricky, but he has enough dragons to, uh, to kind of power through there and those baby dragons along the outside just kind of helping to funnel uh, the dragons th through the base. Just one archer tower, one wizard tower left up. Uh, nice hit, just very good kill squad deployment, good entry, uh, nice plan there on Dal. Uh, Nof Nof, it looks like, is the attacker. Um, okay, let's take a look at base uh, 13 here. And then we'll move on to some Town Hall 9 action. Uh, we have Vino or Vaino uh, attacking Zack here. And this one was a hog attack. I think hogs have become um, possibly even more popular than miners almost because, you know, it, it's all about what bases are set up to defend against. And with all these anti miner type uh, bits and bases, uh, with the Inferno Towers, the pathing, the HP inside the base, with all that being adjusted to defend against miners, 
I think hogs are becoming a better and better choice and people are seeing that. So um, with a hound CC, a suicide queen can get some pretty good value and she does right here, get some good defenses, also helps with part of the funnel there. <clears throat> so the Valks go straight in with the jump, the rage, uh, no golem, but I like that. You know, sometimes the golem isn't gonna be that effective if it's a wizard tower, um, giant bombs, um, Inferno Tower, because that's kind of all splash damage, or at least multi-targeting defenses like the Inferno Tower. So you have to keep in mind the Golem can't tank for a giant bomb, obviously. The Valks are going to run out in front. So a lot of that damage would have been taken uh, anyway by the Valks, even if he had the Golem. So instead, just brings more hogs, gets that compartment taken out with the Raged Valks, and that's all he needed because the rest can go down to the hogs here, doesn't even bring a freeze because that Inferno could be taken out so quickly and the, and the pathing was good on it. I like the Skelly spell to start tanking some defenses and also start to get on that King there. That was a really good aspect of the attack. Oftentimes we see a Poison spell, but the Skelly spell, if you drop it just like right on top of the King, it will take him off the Hogs and it will start to get him low on health. So when the hogs do have to deal with him, it's just a matter of one or two swings and he's down. So sometimes a better investment, if you're planning on bringing one poison to help your hogs out for whatever's targeting them, consider if the king is going to be up and attacking them, bringing a, a skeleton spell instead and using that to kind of take out the king if you time it right uh, like it was timed correctly in this attack. So nice stuff there. Let's move on to, I think we got three Town Hall 9 hits to show, and um, then we'll call it a, a day or a video. Uh, let's see, we have base number 19 here. This one is Marajin, had a very good war from him uh, on his Town Hall 9 account here. Starting off with two golems and it can be tricky to funnel. This is probably the most common type of compartment we see at Town Hall 9, the expo with the two compartments just on either side of it. And that can be tricky if you want to jump into it because you risk the bowlers targeting either this uh, archer tower or this wizard tower. But he, um, he takes all of that out, so creating a very wide funnel. Um, I don't think the golems go in initially, which was the only drawback of this attack. The golems got a little bit wide on him, but it also allowed him to get a few of the defenses taken out, like that archer tower uh, that was actually outside of the base. And eventually that one golem does go back inside. So everything works out here, pops the king's ability. Luckily the queen jumped into that compartment, because if she didn't, the king would have had to swing through a wall, and I don't think he would have gotten through under his own power. So it would have come down to the queen taking out the queen, but she had the lava hound, so might have been a little bit sketchy if the king was not able to reach the queen, but he was. He gets the queen taken out, makes this attack a lot easier. Nice and patient on the hogs. Now, we had so many time fails. I think our nines, they still hit above 50% um, in terms of the, uh, the three-star uh, hit rate was above 50% because we were able to um, clear the nines with only, I think, two, two dip attacks and we had more than two scouts that we used. So we hit a little bit above 50%, not great for Town Hall 9s in CWL, but one of the main reasons we failed was these time fails where something kind of, a hiccup happened in the attack and that caused a delay in like the hog deployment or something. So I think time really has to be something that is taken into account more during planning, at least from what I've seen in our Town Hall 9s. And even if it's going to cost you, um, you know, not the best pathing or, you know, your hogs or whatever taking some damage from something, sooner rather, th rather than later on the deployment of your troops, get that down because you, you never know if you're going to have enough troops to take out the base, but you can tell if you're under like a minute 30 and you still haven't deployed half your army, it's getting a little bit sketchy. And time fails are the most brutal. Nice swag spells here. Um, but uh, yeah, we had quite a few Town Hall 9 fails that were very close. Uh, just ran out of time on a lot of them. So something to work on for the FCs and whatnot. Let's move on here to one of my favorite attacks from this war. This was a cleanup attack on this base. I believe it was a cleanup attack. And um, 
really good stuff here. I think this was the perfect plan for this base. It's a, um, I think he has three golems actually. Yeah, two golems on either side to tank for those witches. And then the third golem, bowlers, the king and the queen. And then jumping over that uh, kind of small, long compartment right there that's pretty much empty with the Tesla there, goes ahead and jumps over there, then he'll jump over the CC also. But um, such good value on the outside from these golems and witches because after these archer towers go down, the golem will, um, I think that the top golem walks back inside the base and actually, yeah, both golems, no, okay. Yeah, that golem, it was doing a little bit of a dance there. It went back and forward and back and forward. Um, so one golem ends up walking towards the bottom there to tank that wizard tower. The other one goes inside the base to join up with the kill squad. But it doesn't matter. His witches are still alive either way at this point. Now the jump spell doesn't quite reach the final compartment with the Teslas and the heroes. So that's one thing uh, that was a drawback because it just was, wasn't enough jump spells. <coughs> Excuse me. To, uh, to get to those Teslas, but even with that being said, the troops just kind of swing through the wall right there, take out the heroes, the golems were still tanking, all those witches left up, uh, pretty much overkill on this base, has the queen's ability still. That'll do it, nice attack to Ali. And uh, we got one more to take a look at, this one being a Laloon by Tom, and um, let's see. This base took, I think, a few attacks. I should probably only show fresh hits. I think they're more interesting. But as I was picking these attacks, I, I just tried to pick a few different troop compositions because there were so many hog attacks. Hogs are pretty much what we're seeing at Town Hall 9 uh, with a few of these Laloon or maybe some witches or something like that. But hogs are king at Town Hall 9 and even Town Hall 10 to some extent now. Uh, so that's a little bit of a change from what we saw a few months ago, maybe, in some clans. Some clans, they use Laloon a lot, so you, 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 it always depends on the clan to some extent. Anyway, though, Tom comes in with an entry uh, right on the uh, conjunction there. It has three golems, heroes, bowlers, so a very... Oh, is it just two golems? Let's see, there might just be two golems. Yeah, because he has two hounds, so I doubt he has three golems. That would be a lot of... Uh, troop space. But anyway, has uh, at least two golems there and the bowlers, the heroes, very big kill squad. He's hoping to get pretty deep into the base here and uh, got the first two air defenses and he also wants to get the next two. So basically gets all the air defenses taken out. Now that can be a little bit tricky because the lava hounds are no longer going to run to the middle of the base there. They're just going to sit on whatever defense is the first available, um, which can throw people off sometimes. But he plays it right. If that happens, you got to put the Lava Hound in the base sooner. Don't deploy it like you typically would. Put the Lava Hound where it'll, it'll tank all the defenses. So he puts it where it tanks the Wizard Tower and both Archer Towers there, um, getting the best value he can from it. So yeah, basically deploy them as if you're just dropping them at the best places, the most to tank, uh, whichever defense they can target that will give them the best tanking value. Don't drop them how you typically would because there's no air defense to draw them into the right place. Uh, I don't think any of his hounds end up popping, which also gets really sketchy uh, for cleanup. But even with that happening, the king still is, is up, which is surprising, but the king is up. Plus a few cleanup minions in there. One hound does pop, uh, which was uh, very fortunate for him. Get some more cleanup troops. A few loons he saved. Uh, very nice stuff there. That's a three star to Tom. Uh, thanks for watching this video. That's going to do it once again. Um, wish I could have gotten more out for you guys over the last few days, but I was a li little bit busy and was not able to stream the end of the war. I was hoping I'd be able to do that at least, but was not able to because I was out of the football game. But I will have some more stuff coming out for you guys soon. Um, some more content for you guys to watch. Maybe even a fabulous fails video. Show some of our nice fails from this war. Uh, good job to uh, Varla. Oh, here we go. Varhai Slake. Um, in their victory here, they're, I think they advanced to 5 and 1, so a good record. We might see them in the playoffs. Um, who knows? Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye, Sectatron out.